All right, so we're going to talk about uh, sort of the big named theorems here. Uh, hard to tell in this year's format uh, how much these will show up on the AP test, but uh, they're definitely big ideas. Um, and yeah, so there's a the chance they'll, they'll come up in one way or another. Uh, so first is the IVT, the Intermediate Value Theorem. And the picture here is we've got a function. Uh, it has to be continuous. So no holes, no jumps, no asymptotes. Um, and if it's a continuous function and you've got uh, uh, the values at the endpoints of an interval, IVT just says that if you pick somewhere in between those two y values, the function has to hit that y value at least once. Um, and so that sort of makes sense. If the graph's continuous, uh, you're going from this dot to this dot without picking up your pen, um, you're going to have to cross that dashed line at least once, right? Um, and maybe more than once, uh, it's called an existence theorem. It doesn't really tell you where it is. It just tells you that it exists. And so it's often called C. And so we know that there is a C such that F of C equals N, as long as that target that I pick is between those two Y values. So intermediate value theorem. Uh, the mean value theorem, the MVT, uh, mean value theorem starts with the same picture. Uh, we've got a function, we've got the endpoints. Um, this uh, function needs to be differentiable this time, so the, not only does it need to be continuous all in one piece, um, but it needs to be smooth, no, uh, no cusps or sharp corners. And this is the good old A rock equals I rock theorem. So it says that if you find the A rock, which is the average rate of change, which is simply the change in Y, over change in x between those two endpoints, uh, so good old slope formula. It says that then if you've got a curve connecting them, right, no sharp corners, there will be at least one place, and the way I drew this graph it looks like there's several, but at least one place where the IROC, also known as the slope of the tangent line, is the same as the AROC. And so there's this C value again, but this time it's where the derivative of the function at that point equals that a rock. So the a rock average rate of change equals the i rock. Um, so that's the mean value theorem. Next one, a uh, similar name, is the mean value theorem for integrals. Um, and this has to do with the average value of a function. Um, and uh, this is easy to get confused with the a rock. So you always want to make sure you're reading it very carefully. If you're making a note sheet for the AP test, make sure these two things are clearly differentiated. Um, so a rock is change in y over change in x. The average value of a function um, is the integral divided by the length of the interval, right? Um, and so we find the area under the curve, that's what the integral does. And then if we divide by the length of the interval, it's essentially finding the average height of the curve. And so um, we sort of need the same area above this line that I'm about to draw as I have below. And it's a little hard to tell here, but you know, maybe somewhere like this, right, would be the average value. So this area um, is that's above the line gets canceled out by this area that's that's sort of empty here below the line. And all the mean value theorem for integral says, which is sort of common sense, is that there is a place, um, again, uh, we don't know exactly where, we just know it exists, but we know there's a place where the value of the function equals that average value. And so f of c equals um, that that average value. And again, that sort of makes sense if the only way that wouldn't happen, and this uh, uh, has to be a continuous function also, I should have said that. Um, the only way it wouldn't hit the average value is if you were completely above the average value or completely below the average value the entire time, but then that doesn't really make sense for that being the average value if you're above it or below it continuously. Last but certainly not least is the fundamental theorem of calculus. 
Part one, uh, most people uh, don't have any trouble remembering uh, how do you evaluate uh, a definite integral. You take the antiderivative and you plug in um, the endpoints and subtract, right? And so a sort of standard practice for evaluating a definite integral. Uh, the other one, which comes up fairly often, but is sometimes a little harder to remember, it, it deals with these things called area functions. And so we've got an integral, but this time uh, the variable um, of our sort of area function is this upper bound of integration. And it turns out, of course, a big idea, derivatives and antiderivatives, derivatives and definite integrals, sort of inverses of one another. They're going to cancel each other out. And so when you take the derivative of this area function, you just get that inside function back. The derivative and the integral cancel each other out. And so they really like this. Um, and the next video will sort of walk us through an example of finding maxes and mins and so forth using that, that fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, again, uh, probably not a bad idea to have these things somewhere on your notes as you're preparing for the, the AP test.